Welcome, I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC-TV, and today we're going to host a COVID-19 update for the town of Duxbury, and specifically for the Senior Center. Um, today, we are lucky enough to have uh, Joanne Moore, the Director of the Council on Aging, and Angela Sinat, the Program Manager for the Duxbury COA. You can watch this program on Comcast 15 or Verizon 39. You can also watch it live on pactv.org slash live. If you have any questions during this uh, production at all, please email them into duxburyinfo at pactv.org. And we will receive the questions here and we'll pass them on to our guests. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Joanne Moore. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Julie. Um, I want to say sorry Kay isn't with us today for Kay Talks. She actually is not feeling well. And so what I hope she's watching at home, um, taking good care of herself, resting, um, having that chicken noodle soup that she made in advance that was in her freezer that she talked about last week, um, washing her hands and doing all the things that she can do to be safe at home. So um, we wanted to talk a little bit or at least refresh you one more time about what was so important to Kay, which was washing your hands. Julie, Julie if you could bring up that screen for me. Here it is. All right, so remember what, you, what uh, Kay said, you need to turn on the water. You need to wet your hands underneath that water. And she said it didn't matter the temperature of the water. Apply soap, lather that soap on your hands and make sure you get it all over all parts of your hands. And you need to keep your hands under the water for 20 seconds. Then you need to rinse your hands off. Don't shake your hands after and then use a paper towel to dry your so remember to do that at home. That's a, a message from Kay um, and we're sending her love and hoping she's feeling better and back with us next week to talk about gut health. But today I have Angela Sinnott, our program manager with us. And we're really excited to talk about what has been created at the Senior Center in the last two, three weeks, four weeks um, to keep people together, um, learning, growing and being part of our community. So with that, I'd love to sh ask Angela the question, how did you create this virtual platform and what is it? Well, we really did turn around in the last couple of weeks and, and create a virtual senior center. Um, we have an amazing team, uh, our staff and the programming team. And we knew about Facebook, certainly we use Facebook a lot. So we started off by trying some things on Facebook Live. Um, and then we quickly learned about Zoom meeting and um, have been able to learn a little bit every day about how to use Zoom to be able to offer programs virtually. Um, and certainly um, our partnership with PAC-TV has been beneficial in being able to um, offer this program um, without Kay today, sorry to say, but um, those are the three platforms right now that we are using to bring our programs to people virtually. So can you tell me a little bit, what was the first program you got up and why did you choose that program or programs? Well, the first program that we did was a fitness class and partly it's because we had a very um, eager and motivated fitness instructor who immediately said, let's do something I wanna help. Um, she was comfortable with Facebook that was um, before we really were completely closed down. So we had an opportunity to work with her um, at the center, testing it out and recording. Um, so Kim O'Brien, who is our yoga instructor, um, does a, a, a chair yoga class, a, a very a, an excellent class on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons at noon. And that she does that now remotely from her home and it is on Facebook Live, but the benefit of Facebook is that it's also recorded so people can go back and watch it later if they aren't available at noon or if that's just not the time of day they want to do the class. So that was the very first class that we offered. Can I, can I interrupt and ask a question? Sure. Certainly. Okay, so can I just pull up your, um, your website so that people Please. can see? So we're gonna bring up the, Tux the Duxbury Senior Center website, the main page. Um, great. And there's a, there's a click down here on register for a program. I'm going to click on that. It's underneath the two red bars over on the right hand side. And when I click on register for a program, 
these are all the different types of programs that you're talking about. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. And if you go over to the right-hand side, it's a click here to register. So if you find a program that you like and it has the, the time and the date of the program, you would click to register here and it would bring you to a registration form, correct? That is correct. Excellent. We're trying to make it very easy and we're trying to reduce some of the um, administration on our end. So we're really hoping that people will, will um, be directed to the website. Uh, Great. To see everything that we have to offer and to be able to register easily. Great. Okay, so back to you. I just wanted people to see where they'd go to, to find out what you're talking about and how to register for them. Yep. So our newsletter is 20 pages long. And when we started working on the May newsletter, I wasn't sure that we were going to be able to fill 20 pages because it's not business as usual. But we filled it, and we filled that newsletter with lots of wonderful programming for May. So um, a lot of the programming will be done on Zoom meeting, and so that online registration is through Zoom, so it's automated. The participants will then get an email confirmation back with the necessary um, link and meeting ID for Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, our fitness classes, like the yoga class that I was describing, that is on Facebook, so that doesn't require registration. You can just go on to Facebook Live at the time of the class or later to watch a recorded version. And the second fitness class that we are offering is our very popular Balance for Life class. And our instructor, Sarah, is also um, remotely um, offering that class on Zoom meeting. Do you want me to bring up just the cover of the uh, Duxbury Doings, May 2020? Sure, that would give some good recognition. And then we can talk about one of our partnerships with a community project. Okay, so here it is. Here's page one, and as you said, and I'm going to go really quickly through it, it is 20 pages, all kinds of things, letters, openings, uh, contact information, you name it. It's just full of great stuff. So I will, I will take that <laughs> off now, go back to the beginning, and that's what it looks like. And do people get this electronically or in the mail? Both. Um, our mailing list is close to 2,000 people. So the newsletter has not yet gone out in the mail, but it is already on the website. So again, we encourage people to um, get a sneak peek before May 1st so they know everything that's going on. And, um, and, for, and they and let can me interrupt. start registering for programs right away. Yep, interrupt one more time. Go back to the um, Duxbury Senior Center um, homepage control room. And as you can see right down here is register uh, the newsletter and program offering. So that newsletter we just showed, if you click on that button, it's going to bring you to the newsletter, May 2020, and up it comes. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent really job. This is wonderful. And like you said, it's chock full of some really great information. So why don't we talk first about this beautiful partnership we have and how we got this covered, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's happening in May. Yes. So a local photographer, Tommy Colbert, um, is doing a um, project that he is calling um, Duxbury Quarantined. And he has been going around to residents and um, businesses and whatnot and taking pictures of how Duxbury looks during this time of quarantine. So he reached out to the senior center to find out what we were doing. And he came around um, respecting all the social distancing protocols and took some wonderful pictures. And he allowed that we could use those pictures with photo credit in the newsletter. So that cover photo um, is showing two of our staff people at the center doing all the packing for the home delivered meals that we're sending out. So it really is a uh, picture speaks a thousand words. And uh, this month alone, we will probably send out close to 900 meals to the community, um, all prepared on site. Um, and delivered twice a week. So we are so thankful to our dedicated staff um, for cooking, packing, and delivering the meals. We couldn't do it without them, and we are so thankful for what they do. Um, let's talk a little bit about May. It's an exciting month. Um, it's a different month, but there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. And I'd say the first thing that we did is we looked at what programming we were already planning that we could still um, present in some way, shape, or form. And so we looked at, um, you know, everything from our fitness classes to our um, programs that um, were already on the calendar to see if we could still somehow bring them to the community. And I'm happy to say that we're able to do many of the programs 
now virtually, but also um, our creative programming team realized that during this difficult time, we really needed some other programming. So we have programming that um, is addressing, you know, wellness in many different ways. We have a Namaste Monday, providing some um, readings and meditations. And we also have some creative outlets with some local artists who are going to be bringing some creative programs to us. So it's, there's, as usual, there's something for everybody, and hopefully we are addressing a lot of the needs of people in the community. So let's talk a little bit about the registration process. Um, I'm pleased to say we figured it out Friday. So um, <laughs> and Angela mentioned early, um, it's a learning process for us and every day's like learning Chinese all over again. So let's talk about our registration and um, how it works. So what we're hoping is that people will go to the website, even if they get a paper copy of the newsletter, that they will then be able to go to the website um, where Julie had showed that there is a register for a program button, um, then find the program that you're looking to register for, click on the link. It will ask for some demographic information because we are still hoping to track who is participating in our programs and be able to communicate with those participants. Um, that is being done again through Zoom, um, many of these things. And so it's an automated process. Zoom then sends an email to the participant, um, giving them a link, hopefully a very easy link for them to just click on and be drawn right to that meeting in Zoom. And it, it's allowing us also to send out confirmations and, and keep in touch with the people who are participating in the program. Can I just, so, um, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Actually, I wanted to point something out that you did. Again, a wonderful thing. If we can bring this up, you have one of the pages in your um, your Duxbury doings is all about Zoom, how you do it, it how you and you 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 did a wonderful job because people who have never used it really don't know what to do. And this is just wonderful. This is page seventeen of your your um, May twenty twenty Duxbury doings. So thank you so much for doing that. Yes. Yeah, so we. We are learning every day. We are trying to share with people every day what we learn. One of the programs that we're going to do Wednesdays in May, we're calling them Zoom socials. Um, it's killing two birds with one stone. Pe we miss people. We want to see them. We want to talk to them. But it's also going to just be a fun opportunity to, to get onto a Zoom meeting like we're on right now, bringing you this um, broadcast and um, playing with some of the features, learning how to, you know, turn off your video if you don't want people to see what's going on in your background or turn off your audio if your dog is barking or um, using breakout rooms to, to talk in smaller groups. All these really fun features that just take a little practice um, and th that will be a nice opportunity for people to practice and just get on and, and see someone that they haven't seen in a in a month or so. Can I ask a question? Really loves to see each other's face and uh, join these calls. And um, the social part is as important as the education or the exercise part of this journey. May I ask a question, ladies? Yes, yeah, you, you are offering so many things here. Is this only available to Duxbury residents or is it available to other people also? It's available to anyone um, who learns about it. We have people from many different communities who have been coming to our programs and they have been reaching out to us. Um, our newsletter mailing goes out to people in, um, you know, 20 different communities around the South Shore, as far away as Watertown and East Bridgewater and down on the Cape. Um, so now these people don't have to travel as far. Um, they can just get on Zoom meeting and still connect with us. That is just wonderful. What a great service that you're offering the, the senior population. Thank you so much. Continue on. Yep. So one thing I did want to add, Angela said on the registration, we're collecting some demographic information. And so some people might say, why do I need to answer that question? So I want to answer that question for you today. Um, so we asked for your name, your address, your phone number, your email address, and your birthday. And you're probably saying, why do you care when my birthday is? Well, we have this software package called My Senior Center. And at the end of the year, we provide a report to the state. I think the report to the, the state this year will be outstanding. 
but so different than anything that we've done prior. So when you put in, you, we can't document who you are unless you add that birth date. Um, so we need that for our, our annual report. Why we want your email address is so we can get a hold of you. So if we have a new program that, after, that comes up after the newsletter and it's something we think you might like, we'll send you out an email. So that's why we want that. And the phone number also, um, we'll be reaching out, doing some robo calls, and we just want a way to get in touch with you. So those are the reasons why we're asking for that information. Um, but it really has to do with this annual report that we provide to the state at the end of the year. So um, let me ask another question to Angela. Um, so do you think this um, virtual programming will continue after the pandemic is done? I do really think it will. I think we have opened a lot of doors. I think that um, we're going to have to ease back into our our new world as we know it and we don't want people to um, be fearful of coming out of their homes so we'll be able to still provide this programming um, that's something we're going to have to learn how to do whether we're doing something where people are are present in the room and we're recording it at the same time i don't know exactly how that's going to work or what that's going to look like um, but i definitely think this is here to stay yep i i agree with you on that um, so we just found out yesterday that schools are canceled. Um, so we might be doing a virtual newsletter in June. Do you have want to share a few of things that you might think are coming down the pike for June? Well, I think in June um, we will uh, take advantage of the fact that Father's Day falls in June. And we will try to have a focus on some programming um, that might interest the men in our community. We are doing a couple of things in May that I hope will sort of launch that for us. We are um, doing a new program called Books and Brews. Um, so not just men like Books and Brews, but we are looking to do some things that, that might bring some of those men into our virtual community. And so a program like that we're hoping um, will be repeated in June and, and some other things. Um, to bring men in. And then I'm certain that we're going to be adding more fitness classes and also our lifelong learning semester that had barely just begun when we had to close our doors. Um, we may be bringing a few more of those classes um, into the virtual community so that we um, can offer those programs before the semester would have ended. Can I ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, from your main page um, on the website, um, if we can bring that up, Control Room, um, we have an events calendar. Right under register for a program, there's an events calendar, which a lot of people love the, the bird's eye view of, of what's available. Here's April. Then if you go to next, you'll get May. And next, you'll get June. Are you populating this with all the different things that are available when you click on the register for for an event? I, ideally, but I'm not sure that everything's going to fit on that calendar. <laughs> okay, because you have so much. Yeah. Okay, but this gives kind so, of the, the basics. This, uh, this is great. It does. You, typically what we have had there are the recurring programs. Yep. Um, so, you know, a, a fitness class that meets um, every week or twice a week, um, a book club that meets every month, things like that. But as we move forward into this new realm of programming, we will, I'm sure, be making better use of that calendar. Okay. It's, it's excellent. Okay. Thank you. So, Angela, I have a question. What mm -hmm. has been the hardest, way, hardest thing about this new way of programming? Well, it's been learning while we're doing, <laughs> learning at the same time as we're trying to, to do things. Um, We've made a few mistakes and fumbles along the way, but people have been very understanding and patient with us. Um, I would say the other hard thing is knowing that there are some people out there that don't have the technology. I've heard from several people who say, you know, my tablet is just so old, it doesn't support some of this technology, or um, they have hearing challenges and it, it just isn't working for them. And it's, it's just a little frustrating. We're so used to hands-on helping people and having people bring their, their smartphone or their tablet or something to us and we can help them. Um, and so it's, it's been a little frustrating trying to, um, do that type of support over the phone, but 
we're getting there. I think we're getting better at that as well. So one thing we're partnering with PAC TV on during the month of May um, for someone who may not be able to use technology is the Singing Trooper. Can you share a little bit of information about that? Yeah, I was so pleased to hear from um, Dan and Mary Clark. Dan is the Singing Trooper, and we typically have an event with them once a year. Usually it's our New Year's Eve at noon program, but we've done other programs with him. He's an ever popular performer. And during this very difficult time, and especially during the month of May, he really wanted to be able to offer a concert. And so he has a recording that he has done that he has made available to different senior centers. And um, we are going to um, host that concert on PAC TV. It will be on every Monday at 11 a.m., the final performance being on Memorial Day. So I think that's gonna be so special. And it's, he calls it his God Bless America concert or his patriotic remembrance. So it will be all the standard patriotic songs, the military tributes, um, and a lot of his ballads that just, you know, bring everyone to their feet. So um, that's gonna be really special. I'm sure some people will watch it over and over again, and I hope they do. Excellent. So have there been any, any silver linings in this? There, yes, there definitely have been some silver linings. Um, I think one silver lining has, that I've realized is that our senior center is more than just a building and that we are still bringing our programs to the community and we are still being a senior center, even though we're being a senior center now virtually. And I have to say, I am so proud of our staff their dedication, their love, their care of the community and the people we work with. Um, we miss seeing them so desperately, but it's wonderful to hear a voice on the phone, see them during a Zoom meeting and know that soon, hopefully soon, we get to yeah. see them in person. Yeah, and so, we've also, as, as staff people, we've been able to participate in some of our programs. We're often on a given day, we're running around um, putting out fires or are doing other things and we don't have the the luxury of participating in some of our programs and now we have we have that luxury where we we have to be on the zoom meeting we get to participate and that's been really nice as well um, another sort of silver lining or side benefit is as we gather for different things some of our um, our more social groups are asking for more. They're they're asking for their own special Zoom meeting because they're finding that they they want more social time. They want um, they want that balance class to to last an extra hour so that they can visit with their friends. So we're um, eagerly trying to provide them with that opportunity, and we're able to do that with our our subscription to Zoom. And I, I, it will be exciting. Our first uh, Balance for Life uh, social will be today at 445. So we're looking forward to um, whoever joins the social. Um, and we sent out a Zoom invitation to all of our participants. Um, but if someone wants to join in the social, have them send me an email. Um, Julie, I, I'm just going to say my email. It's Joanne Moore at DuxburyCOA.com. It is in the newsletter. Um, if anyone has a question, a comment, or concern about anything, please email me any time of the day. Um, we check our messages um, once or twice a day. And so if you have a concern, reach out uh, via phone. Our number at the Senior Center, 781-934-5774. Then there's a brief pause. Don't think we're, you won't get transferred and you'll get transferred into my voicemail. And then we will return the call um, one of our staff members, um, Suzanne triages all the calls and then she passes them out to the person who should return the call. So you will get a call within 24 hours. That is so, fabulous. And is there anything else you'd like to share today? Well, I just, I wanted to um, send a shout out to many of our local community partners who are continuing to partner with us and just community members who uh, are are partnering with us to just give back to the community at this time. Um, many of our presenters were able to continue to provide this programming and the programming is free because our, our partners um, want to do these programs with us. So we are able to um, 
offer programs with the Duxbury Fire Department and with other community um, leaders. So we're really we're really happy about that and proud to continue those partnerships. We're also trying to share many of the programs that our other community partners are doing, whether it be the Historical Society or the Duxbury Free Library, um, so that that we're giving their programs a platform as well. And then the other thing I want to give a shout out is to the local grocery stores, which would be Brothers, Big Y, and Stop and Shop. Our meals would not be delivered in bags that are safe and only used once without their generosity. And so I want to give a special thank you to them. I want to give a thank you to the Duxbury Rotary, a local community member um, who has donated grocery gift cards. So we're able to provide additional food um, and grocery cards for families that are in need. So um, it takes a community and we are so thankful to our community. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies. Also, I want to go back to your website one more time because you, usually on Wednesdays at 1030, um, we have Kay here who is going to be doing all this um, each week. And on the main um, page down the bottom is Kay's Tips and Resources. So if you click on that, you're going to get information that is from directly from the, um, uh, the information that Kay presents. Uh, key items to have on hand in case you get sick, things like that. I mean, she, she has a, a bevy of information that's also, again, on your website, which is just incredibly, um, it's huge. <laughs> you have so much here. <laughs> Every, everything you need is in one place. It's, it's pretty terrific what you've done with this website, ladies. You should be really, really proud. The programs you offer, how you communicate, both electronically and via mail, which is so important, that you're reaching out uh, via the phone, um, you're, you're just, you're really doing everything right. And it's so wonderful to see a community that really has embraced this and said, okay, we're going to figure this out. We're going to continue our programs. We're going to expand our programs. It's just wonderful. And I'd like to thank you both so much for being here today. We, again, remember every Wednesday at 1030, we will have um, the Duxbury COVID-19 update, which is dedicated really to the, um, the senior center. Um, K Talks is the name of it because Kay generally will be here and giving a talk on one subject or another. Um, Joanne, I'm sure you'll have extra guests here as this progresses on. It'll be fascinating just to see what happens in the future because we don't know quite how long this is going to last. So thank you all for joining us. If you want to watch again, go to pactv.org slash Duxbury. And we will see you again next Wednesday at 1030 and signing off from PACTV. Stay well.